Hello there everyone, my name is Waddles and welcome back to another epic Minecraft video. I know, who saw it coming? Uh, nobody, not a single one of you thought I would post Minecraft today, right? <laughs> so, uh, welcome back to the guide world. I've done some work to our beautiful storage building and made it a little bit more pretty. I took the white wool that I put up top. I, I did see some of your guys' comments and I agreed. The white wool looked bad. I put oak wood and some random fences up there instead to blur the... The non-symmetricalness of it all so i think that looks good I, for now at least got a little bit of arches going on in there too you can never go wrong with that stuff and and yeah now we have a lot to do we're going to jump right into detailing our build today and we'll start that detailing with some fences fences are amazing for detailing builds because of the depth and, and the randomness that they have they're a very interesting looking block when it comes to this game I mean, if you take a look at most of the other blocks, they're squares and they just have different colors. But on fences, no, that's not the case. Lots of weird shapes and everything. And that's what makes them great for detailing builds. So if you have a plain wall and you're trying to figure out what to do, try placing random fences. They don't have to do anything or mean anything, just random fences. That's what I did up there. That's what I did down there. And it adds texture, and depth, and detail to your build. Those are all good things. Now, I, I drink a lot of coffee, like almost every day I have at least two cups, black coffee, plain, like that, it, it's great, it's good, it tastes nice. I like tea too, so uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not on team tea or, or team coffee, I like both, uh, but today it's hitting me different. I have a lot of energy today, and usually I get a grand total of zero energy from coffee, I don't know what it is, maybe I've drunk it too much, maybe it's just broken, I don't know. Um, Maybe I'm broken, but yeah, I have a lot of energy today, and you know, I, I gotta say, I like it, but it's also kind of weird feeling. Now, we need some railings in here too, so let's go ahead and do dark oak on the inside because we have a lot of dark wood in our build, so dark wood over there, dark wood up there, dark oak logs, which are dark, and I think these dark fences will accent the colors that we have in our build quite well. Uh, but let's go ahead and leave some of these fences a little disconnected. I, I kind of like that look. I think it looks um, a little more open, a little more nice, and uh, I like both of those words. Now, aside from detailing the top of our build, I also went ahead and almost entirely emptied the wagon before today's episode. Uh, what? Okay, that's what I thought. So we are ready pretty much to, to start moving into the storage building. I wanted to finish the details before I really did that, so that's why I didn't end up um, doing that before the episode. But uh, let's try this. I have an idea for a custom lantern. So let's do a campfire, and then we take some trap doors and put them all around the campfire, but oak ones so we can see through. Um, and I think this would make a really neat looking, um, you know, like little, little light on our build. Let's see. Uh, do we like it? Yeah, I think that looks cool. Uh, the smoke might start to bother me, but it, it, it is what it is. If, if you're building a lantern like this, uh, if it bothers you a lot, you could definitely place like a slab or a trap door above the campfire or a few blocks above it, and that should uh, stop the smoke, but I'm fine with the smoke. Uh, of course, we'll go ahead and add a little bit more detail inside of here. Do we want it in the form of fences or... Uh, slabs though I think we might want slabs because uh, we have like a little bit more room so we could probably get away with doing something like that instead I think that looks good and then maybe um, we could add some fences on the bottom uh, yeah I, I, I like how that looks so uh, that's what we'll do on the inside uh, in our little storage rooms Detailing is one of my favorite steps of a, of a build because you really get to see what you built come to life. Like By placing all of these random little things in your builds, you, you get more to look at and yeah, there's no better way to say it than the build comes to life. It's, it's, it's just a nice payoff. Uh, so there we go, some arches. Now, uh, oh, we need more fences up top. Okay, I never finished that. Now, I, I have an idea for a map wall back here or a back exit to like a super smelter or something so we might try the map wall in here today but um don't don't be bummed if i if i change it i i might end up wanting like a forge near here and uh, like a quick way to get to it but uh i think this build is missing a carpet we need a carpet in here absolutely 
And remember my tip when it comes to carpets. If you're placing a carpet in your build, you should consider placing light underneath it. In fact, you should not only consider it, but you should do it. We still need a jack-o'-lantern farm, so I'm going to have to skip it for now, and unfortunately, also have to leave some lanterns around the build. Don't get me wrong, lanterns are beautiful, but I am not liking them hanging all over the floor. So let's just do this for now. Um, oh, that's going to look weird, so maybe not there. Now, every good storage building should also have the basics. You should have a crafting table, um, uh, definitely a furnace, and in the 1.14 world, definitely a blast furnace as well. We'll also want the stone cutter that we have outside of the build moved over to the inside uh, so we can craft things. A good storage room should become the starting point to any big project. So that means any block that is useful in any way whatsoever uh, when it comes to crafting should be accessible from the inside of your storage room. Preferably in a central location as well, something that's easy to get to. So this, I'd say that's pretty easy to get to, so I'm happy with it. Now we have room for one more block, but I, I don't really know what we could put there. Maybe a loom. Looms could be useful when it comes to banner making. Um, I'm not too sure. Now these raid banners, you, you're you coming with me. Let's find a spot for these in here, because uh, they're cool. Um, could do the front wall somewhere. Um, hmm. Could do up here as well, somewhere up there. Uh... Maybe I like, oh, I'm missing a, a window, uh, but maybe I like this idea. Maybe we place the pillager banners in here. My whole base is going to become decorated with these things. Uh, you, you're going to think I'm a pillager, but I promise I'm not. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a small, nice little detail. We need more banners in here, uh, but banners I'm, I'm not too worried about today. Uh, but in terms of details, I think we're looking pretty good. So that means it's time to start moving things over to the inside of our build. Now, I have a strategy when it comes to this part, uh, and that strategy is organization. Pretty straightforward, pretty common uh, sense type thing, but I have a strong belief that in storage rooms, like blocks or common blocks should be together. So that means dirt should be near sand, because you find it on the surface. Uh, near sand, we should have glass. Near dirt, we should also have like, like coarse dirt and gravel, and then near gravel and sand should be concrete powder. And so that means that's how I'll be sorting my storage room. Um, but it's going to be a lot of back and forth now for a minute, so I think I'll cut a lot of this out. Um, uh, I mean, unless you want to see me run back and forth. Maybe I should put some uncut uh, clips on the second channel. Hmm. Would you like that? Would you watch that? Would anybody watch that? I don't know. Another big word of advice that I have when it comes to storage room organization is prioritizing blocks that you use more. I use less acacia and birch wood than I use uh, like oak and spruce, so acacia and birch go up high. Harder to reach, uh, but I can still reach them, of course. All right, well, I'm going to take a break from moving stuff really quick to finally, finally talk about the Blue Moose Room, also known as the Wandering Trader, because uh, there's a trade that I actually want. Now, y you have to remember that this guy's prices are expensive, and you should also probably know uh, that I have over a stack of emeralds, so please don't judge me, <laughs> but I'm buying some, uh, some melon seeds. There we go. That is our first trade in this whole world. Now, the, the Wandering Trader will spawn in your world and wander around, and the Trader has some randomized trades. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Usually, you can ignore uh, the, the Trader, but uh, I don't have any melons. I realized while I was storing stuff and uh, the seeds, I'll take those. I'm just looking for some jungle saplings now from the guy. I've moved a lot of my stuff over to the storage building now, not 100% of it, like I have some stuff in some random uh, mining chests down in the mines, but just about everything is moved over here. So let's take a look at what I have, uh, all of this iron, uh, this is my coal, the diamonds, 36, emeralds, uh, uh, redstone, lapis, and then finally gold. 
This chest over here is random other things that are kind of special and don't have a spot quite yet. But in general, the organization system here is like ground and natural blocks and uh, mycelium will go up there. We'll have to go get some of that. And then over here we have like wood blocks, jungle wood will go there and then wool and then two cold blocks. Then over here, um, stones and, and such. Uh, back here is end stuff, uh, the clays and terracotta, then prismarine eventually. Uh, more spaces there, nether stuff, and then over on the other side I have um, saplings and then foods and plants and, and everything like that over here, then mob drops back there. These rows are all empty still, so I will have to put something in them eventually. And then we have a lot of room left up top here that's empty that I'm planning on eventually filling up with chests. I talked about it at the end of the last episode, like single chest, single chest, single chest, and so on. Um, just more room up top to store things. Now, I do need to still go ahead and, and fix that side, so I'll do that at some point. Um, and then I, I need to figure out something up there. I did mention that that'll be bulk storage, but uh, not quite yet. Oh, and I need to fix that window. We should do that really quick. Now that we have everything nice and organized, I should be able to sort of come up with projects a little easier and then, of course, know what I have to use and, and everything like that. Um, but we still need to, to work on other types of storage things because we need like a potion building. Um, ideally, I'd love to have like a bakery for the food and, and things like that. But uh, now we need to do the outside really. Oh, oh no. Well, rip. Uh, but we need to do the outside really quick. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just make the plant life come in um, and then we'll cut back in. But I also need a road and I think the road can cut off right here and kind of wander over towards... Uh, big and bark and uh, the trees are gonna have to go too. no more tree farm over here unfortunately this was my tree farm uh, and that means I need to get rid of all of this pod saw as well I do have a pod saw chest so I might dig some of this up with my with my silk touch tools to keep it forever it's special I need a silk shovel really badly and you know i can already tell that i am absolutely going to love this because it like when i'm adding a road in i can run right over here and grab the things that i need like that easy and then i can move on with my day i don't have to like run from one building to the other to find my materials like oh that was the most annoying part of the job uh do they both have leads no you don't you're just following Okay, well, we are almost entirely done now with the terraforming. Uh, I went ahead and pretty much just bushes, fences, a few trees in here, sweet berry bushes, and now finally uh, grass to just kind of finish everything off in here. It's honestly kind of flat and open looking. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of that, so maybe we'll need to like make this path a little thinner, but my thinking was uh, that this is uh, like, probably going to be a pretty main part of the world. Like, I'll start here or, or finish here or something. So, I don't know. I, I wanted it nice and open. But now, um, we're going to use uh, a little bit of time to talk about maps. Fully zoomed in maps that are decorational. So, um, first, you're going to need some item frames to display your map and a good location. I talked about putting a map over here, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a 3x3 three three square of item frames. After you have your 3x3 three three square, you're going to need your map making supplies. So let's go ahead and grab our cartography table, we'll throw it over there. Actually, that's a good spot for it, that might stay there. Uh, then we need paper, so I need to go ahead and find... Uh, more paper. I think I have a little bit here. Yeah, just a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be enough because we need a total of nine maps. What we're trying to do here is create a nice picture of what we have going on over at our settlement so far. Now, understandably, I've been receiving quite a bit of questions about map making lately, so that's also why we're doing this little segment here today. Now, to do this process, you're definitely going to want your inventory to be cleared because you'll be carrying quite a bit of maps. Now, start by making a map. So here we go, we have a map. 
Now we need to decide which way we want our whole map wall to go. And to me, it looks like we might end up having this map right here that I'm holding be the center. So now to make your next map, you're going to need to head off of your map entirely. Um, any direction doesn't really matter, but head entirely off of your map, but keep your eyes on your map. You want to pay attention to when your pointer leaves the map. So there we go, my pointer's off the map. Make your next map now. Um, this is the easiest way to do a, a map wall and have all of your maps locked together. That is what a lot of the questions have been about. How do I make my map walls all kind of locked together and, and make sense? Well, uh, this is how. So now, um, with that other map decided to be our center, all I need to do is pretty much travel around in a square and make a bunch of maps. And since all of our maps will be fully zoomed in, this shouldn't be all that hard. But I, I definitely do advise that... Uh, before you start just making a bunch of maps, double check your other ones and make sure you're not on uh, any of them. You, you don't really want to waste any map supplies, um, it's just kind of wasteful, so just double check your maps, make sure you're not on them before you make your next one. And I'm kind of surprised honestly, it looks like we may be able to fit our whole little, I guess, section of our peninsula or island area on our map, which is pretty crazy. Eventually, I definitely am going to come back around and, and make a fully zoomed in large map, like like big, bigger than three by three. But for now, in, in that small building, this was definitely going to cut it. Another little tip, when, when you're doing this process, um, keep your maps organized in your inventory. Uh, because it'll be easier to put them up on your wall and to know which one goes where. And spoiler alert, guess who didn't do that? <laughs> uh, my maps are all disorganized, so we're going to have fun uh, playing the map puzzle today, which is fine. Map puzzles are fun uh, to me. Once you've made a good amount or all of your maps, head back over to wherever your wall is going to be. And then once you've made it back to your wall, start with your center map. Uh, at least that's how I like to do things. After placing your center map, you can use that to sort of line up the other maps, if you will. Uh, so this map goes there. The river lines up perfectly. Uh, then this one, I think, uh, nope, does not go there. Mm -mm. It goes there. Aha. Mm, this one is... No, that doesn't go there. This goes there. Yeah, yep, okay. Uh, this one, maybe, maybe you go there. I think you do. Uh, this map there it is okay okay uh, an ocean that's over there this is there look at me go um, this is speed mode there and then finally there so that's our whole settlement now um, and wow that's really cool looking so honestly I, I really really love maps I've said it before and I will always say it map walls are so cool and an amazing way to not only look at what you've done so far but also a pretty good way if I do say so myself to decorate a wall now also keep in mind that you can um, label things on maps you can right click on a banner with a map kind of like this um, there we go but I don't really want that with this map I'd rather have a picture map here and then maybe I'll do like an informational labeled map later on but but for now, I, I think this is pretty good. And with this, we can actually really see what's going on with our whole area. Like we can see uh, the dirt section down there, the more like farm area, if you will. And then the city that we're working on over here. And you can see building shapes. So we have giant rectangle, uh, perfect square, interesting oval shape thing. And yeah, I just, I just love this. And I really like how the coral reefs show up too. But I think that's enough map appreciation for now. Now I have one final task today, and for that task, I'll actually need my terraforming supplies back out. And that is because we are going to finally, finally, finally terraform up uh, a little area that has been sitting empty that I talked about really when we moved over here. Uh, so there is this little lake uh, or square area that I talked about turning into a lake, and today it must be done. We need to turn this small sunken area into just a simple pond. So, um, or you know what? It could be more of a waterfall. That'll be cool. So, uh, you know what I'm doing. You know the deal. Let's go ahead and terraform up this area so it looks nice and pretty for the tour that's coming soon. So I'm starting with the water. I, I definitely want water pouring down this thing. And then we'll be coming back in with our blocks, the pretty ones. Now we need uh, some plant life around this thing. Uh-huh. 
some berries as well berries are always nice for decorating always bone meal the water nowadays as well and then I, I think we're good it, it looks better than before and maybe we'll come back and and build this into maybe like a bigger pond uh, that could be cool but for now I think that's nice so you remember how I just said uh, that we had one more project for the day well, uh, that was a lie. Uh, there's one more, one more, for real, project that I want to talk about, and that is under down here, um, below, deep below the lighthouse. So, um, we're getting to the point in, in this world where we could definitely start thinking about mass transit systems, big projects, things like that, especially um, now that we have a beacon. That means that we need a way over to the stronghold. The stronghold is the closest and the first thing that I would love to have some sort of crazy fast transportation system over to. And that would mean, of course, nothing else other than an ice road. So, um, this area down here will be transformed slowly but surely, maybe next episode or something, uh, into an ice road that will take us right over to uh, the end. But the problem here is this. Um, inside of here is my skeleton farm. So we're going to actually end up having like back-to-back -back rooms down here. I have materials that I actually forgot about. I didn't know this stuff was down here. So our rooms will be back-to-back -back and we'll have to avoid the skeleton farm. Um, now the tunnel over to the end is going to be I think just a diagonal cut We're down at y38 So we shouldn't really have to worry about hitting the ocean or anything because uh, because after all we are completely under the ocean here um, So hopefully fingers crossed we don't hit any of that But unfortunately with um, us being under the ocean the beacon is going to be a, a little difficult to use because if we wanted to use it we'd have to dig up you know to the surface and uh, the surface is water, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Now the hallway will be a, just a straight diagonal, I think, until we have to turn. We'll definitely be using our map for the job and then the ice. So we'll be using packed ice, not blue ice, I'm sorry. And the uh, packed ice will just go right down the middle like that. And then we'll drive a boat on it to, to get over there and that should be good. I'd like to use a lot of end stone and, and uh, bricks on this um, build too because it goes to the end so that would kind of make sense and i'm thinking like uh like a pretty narrow start and stop point so i can just hold down the go key and, and go and then not worry about driving off into my room <laughs> if that makes sense uh but yeah so that is the big plan with um this project and, and what i'd like to do and uh yeah I, I think everything makes sense there so uh i'm gonna go ahead and move this a little forward so we have room to do our um our walls in this room however we want and i think that's where we're gonna leave this project at today not uh, not much done at all but that's what i'm thinking and um this is probably something that we'll be doing very, very soon here. So I have the bubble columns in, and it uh, looks like I have a lot more stuff to move back over to the storage building. Yay! <laughs> and then for the entrance, we'll just have, you know, these two bubble columns in the lighthouse, and we can just run over here, drop down, and that'll be that. Now, I'm, I'm thinking maybe eventually we'll add another bridge on the other side of the library, because we'll have more buildings on the other side of that build, so... Um, I'd, I think I'll want to access the library in many different ways, but I, I don't know. But it's time for the comment of the day. And by the way, these things are always open uh, because of this pressure plate here. It, it bothers me, but it also doesn't. I just try and ignore it. Um, but that's what that is. And we're going to probably start using that door more because uh, our storage building. But today's comment of the day is from Game 19 Magame19. Uh, the comment is, why don't you use a shield? They're so useful. And, you know, this is a comment not only from my game, but from a lot of you guys. I don't use a shield because I have no good reason. <laughs> I just kind of don't think about it. I played uh, before there were shields, and so I kind of just got used to it like that, and... I never adapted when they were added in, like, the combat update or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long time that shields have been in the game, and I haven't even bothered with them. I know. I, I definitely should, though, at least once the whole combat system is changed again. Um, but, yeah, I, I totally should start making uh, shields and, and using shields. Uh, I know they're helpful. Um, and you guys like to tell me a lot <laughs> that I should be using a shield. So, uh, I guess I'll use a shield. Or will I? I guess only time can tell. 
And that is where we are ending the video today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A little bit of a, a mixed project episode. I, I'd like to do more of these. I have fun doing these. Special shout out to Grade 1 today. Uh, thanks for uh, supporting me always. And thank you everyone else for watching. Go have a good one. Goodbye, everybody.